We have a major, major shakeup happening at AT&T even after the media spinoff. So we have another great article here from Fierce Wireless. I will leave it in the description down below so you guys could check it out. So I've been hinting this for the last several videos to you guys. There's a shakeup. There's a reorgan reorganizing happening at at and I've said this in videos. I tweeted it out earlier. I've seen the internal documents. I just couldn't speak on, uh, on those documents publicly. I needed to wait for another publication to come out with an article. So we now have the article. So there are changes and shifts happening at at and So what's happening here is essentially they are merging the consumer mobility with business mobility and it created redundant positions. So a, a good amount of longer term senior staff has retired. Um, actually, several people have retired for for this. And when when those changes were announced, the, the, the retirements were announced a few days before this announcement. Other positions were also reshuffled. Some were given different tasks and some actually got promotions. So Jeff McGelfresh, who was the CEO of communications, is now the COO of AT&T. What, what does this mean? He is now literally the right-hand man to Stanky. And actually, what I believe, he will be the successor to Stanky when Stanky does retire. And Stanky is setting himself up for retirement. So Stanky is going to look like somewhat of the bad and the good guy. So he's looking good because he got rid of media, deleveraging the company. The debt's gone, $40 billion off the books. And the fastest way he was able to do it was to get rid of media. Now he is deleveraging the company even further. AT&T has had several annual layoffs over the years, several of them. And the company still came in too heavy even now that the media's portion is gone. So they are further leaning in, leaning out the company. So again, they are merging the business units, which is causing, as I mentioned, a lot of redundant positions to no longer be needed. So, so here we go. Here's, here's, a, here's a portion of the article from Fierce Wireless. Having shed its media properties at t is laser focused on 5G and the fiber strategy. And that means new executive appointments to support at and uh, John Stenke. So Jeff McGelfresh is now the COO, as, as I've mentioned, and he will likely be the replacement to replace Stenke once he retires. And then Thaddeus Arroyo, who was previously ser uh, served as the, a the CEO of at t Consumer Business, is now chief strategy and development officer. And he is also a veteran. He's been there for with the company for a while. He was he was with Singular Wireless and in 2016 was picked up to head up the AT&T business after retirement of of Ralph De La Vega. And there were there was several other changes uh for example Rick Rick Weldy or Rel Day is now going to be in charge of AT&T Enterprise. So several, several changes are happening with, without the company. Now, I know you, the consumer, are going to ask, what does this mean for me? Well, it means we have now the, the new and better AT&T company. We, we would like to hope, of course, that's more focused, that's finally going to really ramp and scale C-band at a big scale. And what is C-band, you ask, if you're new to the channel? That is the spectrum that fuels the wireless. And at and just needs more of it. They're gaining customers at an insane clip. They did another 691,000. They had four quarters of pretty huge growth last year, growth that they've never had. And they were already a big company. Now in Q1, they're already hinting that they'll, they're, they're going to take that momentum into Q2. And it's like I said in the previous video, and, and, and I've said to, to plenty of people that I talked to today, this is a win-win for AT&T. They just win now. If they get the fiber, they get the wireless. 
If they get the wireless customer and then there's fiber there, they get both. So it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a win-win. They scale fiber. The goal is by the end of, I think, 2022, or no, 23, actually, 2023. This is, of course, subject to change as well. They want to get to 200 million pops covered with C-band. And they want to get to 30 million households with fiber. They're at 17 as of the end of Q1, 17 million. So they got another, what, 13 million households to grow to get to 30. I think it's doable. The pace is ramping with, C, uh, with, with, uh, with fiber. The spending is definitely there. They're at the peak now. They're at peak spending for this year and next year. So they have big momentum, big headwind. Could a price increase potentially slow them down a bit? Yeah. I was speaking with some of the internal people. They don't anticipate now. They don't anticipate many people to leave with the price increase. Six to twelve dollars for the hassle of having to switch to another provider. Likely not gonna not gonna move the needle much, especially now that there are rumors out there that Verizon and T-Mobile want in on this price increase as well. So this is more of the. Uh, the brief version of what's happening, we'll have to learn more over the next few several months as to what changes are going to be implemented by these people that are taking over these new positions. Like Jeff Miguel Fresh, he's going to be assigned a new task and and we're going to see what he's going to implement. He's going to be the leader of the company. He's going to uh, report to Stanky. I don't think Stanky is going to be involved more. Actually, there may be a transition period where Jeff may actually now become the face of the company. So if there's any interviews, uh, publicly media uh, related, anything, Jeff may be the go-to moving forward. The earnings calls, we may now have Jeff run the earnings calls moving forward if they are really serious about this change. So let me know, you the consumer, what you think about this. I know some of you are experiencing a slowdown on AT&T. I understand I get it. The C-band is not at scale. Even the end of the year, if they hit the goals or exceed the goals, I should say, the end of year, they want to do 75 million. If they get to 100, that is that still means there's 100 million pops that are not served with C-band. Verizon will likely hit 200 million by the end of the year. T-Mobile is already above 200 million. So just take that into consideration as you do your shopping or as you Look at AT&T as an overall company. It's, it's going to be some, somewhat of a mixed bag for them, but I think they're moving in the right direction now. Even last year when they were making the cuts and some of the changes, I was like, there's more needed. Now that they did the media spinoff, I felt like there's even more needed. Now we're starting to see, okay, they're leaning out the company. They're making these changes. Now, you know, we need a, we need a change on customer service. We need to modernize the My at t app. We need to do the website. We just need to do all of that across the board. So again, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel. Follow my social media outlets for more updates and interactions. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.